Hi everyone, my name is Lotte. I'm the founder of Mother Organic Skincare, and today we are here with board certified dermatologist, Dr. Alexei Zavorins. And today we're here to answer your questions that you have submitted on our social media. Should pimples be actually popped? Well, that's that's a very controversial question uh, because uh, if you have severe inflammation, so these red uh, nodules, these red pimples, painful, large. Uh, so if you pop them routinely and very aggressively, this may promote uh, more severe inflammation. So they might get even more painful, even more larger, and you might get new lesions. And another thing that by popping them and by promoting more of this irritation and inflammation, you might promote uh, appearance of scars. So okay, which one is of not the, a nice thing to have. Yeah, one of the complications of acne, of course, uh, is scarring. And uh, uh, it's better to avoid scarring than to uh, be left with treating it because sometimes it could be quite complicated to treat. Should I start using dermacollagen before the age of 30? So before the collagen loss? And is there anything else I can do bef uh, besides uh, using collagen supportive skincare products? One thing is intrinsic uh, aging. So the aging that is programmed uh, from birth. The other thing is uh, extrinsic aging. So this is aging that is influenced by external factors. For example, uh, the sun or smoking. All of this might lead to the so-called oxidative stress and premature aging. The bottom line is here that, yes, of course, you can use uh, these type of uh, products like uh, dermacollagen uh, even before the age of, uh, of 30. Arata JP asks, how do I know my skin type? Well, first of all, let's start with what are the skin types. And uh, it's a classification that uh, has four skin types usually. So normal skin type, dry, oily, or combined. Dry skin type is a skin type when you would see maybe some flakiness, maybe it would be harsh, untouched. Oily skin type, well, I, I think it's uh, easy to understand that it's oily, it's greasy. You could see whether it's oily or not. So one of these tips uh, would be would to try to use a very thin piece of paper uh, if it would be mildly colored it would also be uh, uh, helpful and just apply it to your skin hold it there for several seconds maybe a minute and see whether uh, you have the greasiness on on the paper or not so, okay so it's just like it acts like an indicator so yes, you have oil it, uh, exactly. colors darker then it means that you might have the uh, oily or combined yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, about the combined skin type it's it, it's a skin type where you have in some parts usually the so-called t-zone so the forehead and your nose you would have more kind of a oily skin and in the other parts you would have more kind of a dry or normal uh, skin type lizzie asks what is the best thing you can do for enlarged pores and oily skin well uh, that is actually a very very common issue first of all and a common question that uh, that I'm being asked on a daily basis if the problem is quite severe then you should first of all of course consult your dermatologist this is the first thing but in any way uh, appropriate skin care of course is uh, a core uh, thing to remember routine uh, cleansing yeah uh, uh, at least twice a day and uh, with with cleansing you have to remember that uh, you should not be too aggressive, not to impair the skin barrier. Uh, and uh, the other thing is that you have to choose products wisely uh, that uh, are afterwards put on your skin. Uh, so these are products that are aimed at removing, uh, for example, residual uh, dead cells on, on your uh, skin that might block the pores, the sebaceous glands. And this might uh, lead to, uh, to acne breakouts, for example. How fast can you expect results from skincare products? Well, yeah, it really depends on what kind of results are you expecting. If we're talking about moisturizing the skin, and we have seen it in our um, studies, that uh, sometimes you can improve the hydration levels of the skin and improve the barrier of the skin 
uh, in a matter of uh, some minutes or hours. When we're talking about the production of collagen, for example, then uh, it is a matter of a month, two or even three months because it takes time for our body, for the cells of our body, like fibroblasts, to produce this protein. Is there a point in using anti-stretch mark products during pregnancy? Of course, you don't have to expect uh, magical results that uh, these stretch marks will disappear just from using a cream, but it is definitely a good prophylactic measure. There are certain compounds that are discussed in scientific literature that uh, could help uh, attain this. Uh, one of these is, for example, Centella Asiatica. It has been used for ages for treating uh, scars, for treating uh, certain wounds when you have to repair the skin. And in a way, a stretch mark is is is, is a, a scar, scar, isn't it? Yeah. So so Centella Asiatica really really works good on that, and there are actually some publications that also address this. The uh, SOS Zika uh, cream is, is, is uh, in my opinion, it, it could be helpful for stretch marks because it contains this Centella Asiatica. Uh, if, if, uh, if I'm correct, it also contains hyaluronic acid. That's true. That's also been seen in some publication that it helps uh, for stretch marks. I hope that uh, everyone enjoyed and got some new, uh, really fundamental um, knowledge of how to take care of your skin in a really evidence-based way.